Morning everyone, so it's a beautiful sunny day. I'm just sitting under my porch contemplating how I'm going to tackle today's project or this week's project uh, for the sawmill. Uh, last night I went and collected um, some parts for the uh, blade guide rollers. Um, I, I don't didn't have the tools really to make the parts as I wanted to make them with the design so I contacted a guy that's quite local to here called Aid, Adrian from Aid's Workshop and asked if he'd be willing to make the rollers for me. He uh, has a hobby machine workshop and tends to do a lot of projects for other people which is really good of him and really really talented machinist uh, he has you know like uh, relatively small hobby machines and really makes the most out of them you know he does does jobs on them that you wouldn't expect uh, small machines like that to really be able to do so he's obviously really quite talented and uh, I just gave him some basic ideas um, and a couple of video links to some uh, things you know that look like I wanted and uh, let him kind of do most of uh, the designing process himself and uh, I definitely like the intricacies of the machining and everything himself and he's just done just an incredible job I'm so pleased I've got the bits here bring in closer show you what he's made right so here's all the uh, parts so these are purchased these are off of uh, tractor um, top links I haven't got the bearings, hmm, I must have left them inside. But anyway, this is what um, Aid has made for me. So these are two rollers that are going to be used. The band, uh, the blade of the, the, the band of the bandsaw, the blade uh, sits on these, and this prevents it from being able to slip off as the um, blade is moving through the wood. And the blade doesn't quite touch these, so the teeth actually stick out like here and they also not only do they guide and stop the blade from falling off they also direct the blade the way in which we want the blade to sit so if, if the blade's naturally facing up a little bit we can um, pull it down because the blade will actually be these will actually be forced up against the blade the blade will ride on top but we need them to move in all of these directions for adjustment so we need them to move left right up down and everything in between but we also need to move in and out and up and down um, so that's what that's the plan and and back back and forward back to front so we can adjust the size of the log between them um, So yeah, Aid's made these for me and uh, there's bearings in the middle which we're going to fit now and uh, Let me get the bearings and I'll show you how these go together All Right, so I've got the bearings Okay, so the plan is is that This bolt comes off the end of here I can't go over what a lovely job he's done of these. I could have not even come close to getting the finish of this and the bluing and everything. And they're just perfect. Really nice job. I mean, look, you know, it's just, just gave him chunks of round stock and chunks of square stock and he's made these beautiful parts. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, the plan is they get a bearing in each side, which I need to press in. Um, we'll just rest them in there for now. Um, and then, sorry, that sits between those as well. Like that. This will all become clear if you watch uh, Aid's video of making them. But they, that sits like that. And then <coughs> this that we call it a rose joint, which is a tractor top link, is going to be cut off there and welded to a separate piece. So these are going to slide into another piece of box, which is going to have bolts from all sides, so we can it can be adjusted like this by clamping force on the bolts this will be in here and this piece this will be cut off but this piece welded to that other piece of box section so if you imagine that other piece is slipped over here and this can move inside of it like that giving us adjustment i hope you can see that yeah giving us adjustment like that and then the blade guides will slide very full off but yeah over there in there and be clamped on from the outside giving this adjustment all around you know like, like that so that's the plan that's what we're going to do it will become clear if you watch Aid's video i recommend watching his video first to see how they're made and the idea and then coming back and watching me fit them so i'm going to work today on getting all these adjustment bolts in and the bit of box that slides over and these welded without getting them bound up 
and uh, figuring out how we can do up and down and in and out. Yeah, let's get to work. Right, I'm back. Uh, it's about two and a half hours later. I had to go and do some um, uh, some lambing with my neighbour. He's teaching us uh, what to do. So me and Dot just rushed up there as there was a lamb coming. So yeah, I'm going to get these bearings fit in here. Um, and start assembling these and come up with a plan of what we're going to do. Right, let's see if this will press in. Got a bit of wood to protect it. There. One. Very nice. All right, so I've got to put this inner in here as well. That stops the um, well. It's just like a bush. It stops stops the inners of the bearing race being pulled um, when the clamping cl clamps onto the uh, rose joint, as we're going to call it. And that bearing started on there. Aid says in his video when he's making these that I would be perfectly capable of making these myself and he's right I could I could have made these if I had a lathe but I wouldn't have been able to make them to this quality they're really well made very very well done there we go two bearings fitted with a bush in the middle to stop the inners being clamped towards each other knackering the bearings all right get the other one done i've got the rollers assembled now i need to cut off this off of these because i only want this bit it's just a cheap handy way of uh, getting a, a joint like that and then uh, they're going to be welded to the end of this box like that so i've got to be careful when i weld it not to um not to weld them so we lose all our m movement but should be alright with the TIG welder Alright there's our two little uh, rose joints now they're going to get welded to there like that Check of everything. That's still moving. Don't motion it. Yeah, it looks fine. Oh, I'm not going to risk welding these sides. Uh, that would be more than enough to hold that. And we've still got, uh, although it's a bit hot and a bit stiff, that's still rotating just fine. So, good. Yep, just clean that up. Right, got four holes drilled, two offset to each other, so those are offset to those ones. Just thought that would probably be a good idea. I'm going to assemble a bolt with a nut on it all the way through. way through and another one on the back of there like that I'll weld them on I'll just hold them in the right place for me while I weld them this isn't actually my idea this um, I got this idea from another YouTube channel a guy that's built a sawmill pretty big cool sawmill uh, I'll have to link to his channel um, as well to credit him for this because this is his idea with this um, track the top link really nice idea in this adjustment I saw it and I liked it I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do that so I linked to his channel as well hopefully these come out Headphone users beware. Yeah, they're gonna come out. What about this one? Yep, good. 
Hot, 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 hot. Ow, 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 ow. Stick that there. Cut some bolts down as I haven't got any longer uh, short enough bolts and they'll look a bit stupid sticking out. Right, I'm going to do a trial run, see if we can get one of these together. So, that piece that um, Adrian has beautifully machined goes down through there, through that rose joint, hopefully. It will. There we go. Right down through there. Good. Still a bit warm, it's alright to touch, but it's a little bit warm. And that needs to go on there. Don't know how tight of a fit that is. Tight. Just a perfect fit. It's going to need a bit of persuasion. Right. Alright, let's give this a little gentle tap. It's only mild still, so I don't want to go too hard on it. Oh yeah, there we go. That's got it. That's it. Tiny, tiny bit more. That felt like it bottomed. It did. And there's just like a fraction of a millimetre there so that there's a bit of clamping going on on there. Let's get that in next. Oh, that frame there, there we go. So yeah, little, tiny little bit. If you watch Aid's video, you'll see he you left a tiny bit of clearance there. So that this washer just clamps it all together. Ow, getting hot. Ow. <laughs> Could wait for it to cool down, but i got a lot to do this week. So there we go, roller. Now, they go in there. Okay, so roller's spinning lovely. So let's say we loosen the bottom off quite a bit and wind this top one. That should go down. No, sorry, up. Up. That's right. Or maybe it's already facing up, is it? Ah, it's already. It's already up. Right, there we go. So we go the opposite way. So we loosen that one. And then if we tighten that one, the roller should point downwards. And it is. Can you see that? It's only subtle, but that's all it needs to do. See that pointing down just slightly? Might be easier to see with a level on it, but it is moving. So just to show the adjustability, it's bottomed out. I'm squeezing this level against the uh, roller edge. And then if we wind this in, we should be able to go up. Okay, so you see that's quite significant. We can go from level to uh, completely out of level. That should be plenty of adjustment. Great, now to make another one. Right, both done. Both working great. So now I'm going to weld this to the top of one, making sure it's perfectly square, an engineering square, which is sitting very nice. So I'm going to weld that on there and that's going to be our up and down adjustment. Now I was going to have adjustment in and out as well, but I can't see why I need it because <clears throat> the band has to go where the band goes on this mill because it hasn't got big tyres like some of them. So I can't see why I need to adjust in and out. Um, so I'm going to not do that for now. I might regret that later, but I don't, I don't think so. Let's see. So my feeling with this is that you, uh, you do want lots of adjustments so you can get things tuned in. But you don't want so many potentially unnecessary ones that when you've got a problem you just don't know which adjustment it is. So I want to take out any adjustments if I can. And this is one I don't think I need in this situation because of the thin band wheels. The blade has to ride in one spot. I can't track it all over the place because it just goes where it goes. Um, so I don't know why I need in and out unless I change the band size, which I'm not going to do um, because it wouldn't fit on the roller properly anyway. So yeah, we're going to go with this. What was that?
What the hell? That's alright, that's right. Strange. Must have been a bit of air in the line. Right, so this is what we come up with. This is the fixed side um, that doesn't slide in and out. This just stays stationary um, and it's just got adjustment up and down that way and this can tilt in every direction. Um, so yeah, I can add a plate on this with slots so it can go that way and that way if I need to but I don't think I'm going to need that adjustment but if I do need it I can add it, no big deal. Um, I just don't want adjustments everywhere I don't need. Right, so this is going to be mounted on here, like this. Hey, puss. So I just need to get it all lined up and straight, sitting where I want it to. I do have the adjustment, so it's not that critical. Um, but yeah, that is essentially it. So I'm get some clamps, see about getting that welded on. Side is tacked on. Seems to be working. I suppose we might uh, fire her up. There it goes. Tacked on should be alright. Okay, well uh, that worked absolutely great, so I'm pleased with that. So we'll probably weld that side on, but not 100% sure yet. Leave it tacked, get the other side done, and then run a test, I think. But yeah, excellent. So we've got basically uh, adjustment in all directions other than in and out. If I want in and out, I can cut that off there, I have a plate, and have that slide in and out up there, which is no big deal. Right. I think I've got a plan and a mechanism for this sliding side. This side moves in and out, or side to side rather, to account for different thicknesses of logs. Um, so this is the bit that's going to be mounted to the frame. Um, we've got up and down movement via these bolts, up and down. If I want to at some point put in and out, I can put a plate on there with a, you know, with a slot in it. Like I said, I don't think I need that. And then that will slide in and out of there, like that, on some of these bolts that lock, probably. And for now, maybe make something a bit more complex in the future, a hand wind handle or something. Right, so uh, just welded on that assembly, just tacked it to the, uh, to the mill, and I can't weld it accurately enough to get the in and out, so one side can be fixed, but the other side needs adjustment, so I'm just making, uh, adjustment plates This would be a lot easier if I had a mill, but I don't I should probably take that glove off so I don't get wrapped up
Now I need a, a guide that's going to run across the top. Hey, bus. Hello, girl. So I need a guide that runs across the top as well, I think. And some kind of mechanism to slide it in and out with and lock it. So plenty to do yet. Right, so I'm going to weld these three pieces of angle together and make like a slider. So you'll be able to slide across here like this and then this piece will lip under there, hold it all square so we'll have this, you know, this mechanism, this slider. Let's slide across and we'll attach this to it as well from under here. That will keep it square. I'm going to add some kind of mechanism on top of here that will uh, pull, that will come backwards and forwards that I can control from back there, ideally. Alright, we've got our uh, nice slider, like really very little play in it. It's actually maybe a little bit too tight. I won't be able to paint this area. But I think that's better than it being having a load of play in it, considering it's a blade guide. So now I've got to figure out how to mount this to it and make sure it all runs true with each other. And then so the goal from the start was always to try and get 800 between here and here. And I'm just under, so my max cut is going to be uh, 31 inches or 785, 790 mil, so really close. If I go any further over this way, I'm not going to be able to slide it this way very far. Uh, so that's, that's it, that's my max. So I'm pleased with that, got very close to the target. There it is, sorted. So it just needs uh, wire brushing. Got the slag off and now some kind of mechanism so I can control it from back here. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Right, well I got a bit carried away last night, working till late, changing this raising and lowering mechanism. Um, the last one worked, it just uh, it was quite accurate as well on the cut within a couple of millimetres but the trouble was occasionally it would get bound up um, I think this carriage and this engine is just too heavy for it, for that method so I've done it like this with an overhead uh, bar and made like a winch and uh, this winch drives that winch which drives the bar which lifts them both evenly so we look like that need to trim off the excess and stuff but that is working great I'm gonna get some better um, cable clamps and some better shackles because these aren't really man enough but other than that that is gonna be a really nice accurate raising and lowering system as you can see there's the bit on the left there is the winch that drives it which goes to the winch with the handle on it and then the two sides get raised off of those bearings and it was nice I was able to do it with stuff that I already had um, that was a piece of bar given to me by a neighbour and some bits of uh, old plate, so that's good. Right, let's uh, get this blade on. I had to sort out that raising low because it got jammed up and I couldn't move it. It was uh, stuck where it was, so it became a priority even though it wasn't the focus of the video. We'll get this uh, blade on. Tracking. All right, tensioner up. So at the end of this video, I'll demonstrate why this uh, tensioner does work well. Right, put tension. That should do the trick. We run it like that. Should find it tracking. Bit of 
lost all. All right, that cable's broken, so let's put that on there. All right, ready? Decompression. So they, uh, they work great. So good work there, Aid, Aid's workshop, worked a treat. Now I did them quite a bit bigger than a lot of people do them. But sometimes they're quite a bit smaller than that. And the reason being is because they are going to be traveling very, very fast. And the bearings will last longer because I've done them a bit bigger than normal. Yeah, really pleased. Uh, next thing we're going to do today is paint it. Um, get some paint on it because it's getting a bit of a surface rust on it now and get a coat of paint on it and then uh, get it set up uh, it needs guards yet guarding and stuff but that's literally going to be the last thing I'm going to do um, got a lot to do before and it needs guards right let's paint There it is, all done, all painted. Looks good, doesn't it, with a bit of paint on it? Yeah, very pleased. Show you from the front. And from the front, you've seen it all before, just looks a bit more finished with the paint on it and with the new raising and lowering mechanism. So yeah, very, very pleased. Right. And uh, oh, we took the wheels off and painted all around them as well. Ah, right, back to where we started at the start of the video. Uh, really glad that's done. Uh, put a lot of hours into that this week, and um, you know I'm pretty confident that that machine's going to work, and I'm really happy with it. Um, so yeah, thank you to Aid from Aid's Workshop. There'll be a link to his channel in the description below, and you can watch him go and make those rollers today. We'll put these videos out at the same time. So yeah, uh, now just after this, for anyone that's interested, I'm going to go over some testing I did of a couple of the mechanisms just to address some uh, uh, some of the comments about worries about things. Uh, if you're not interested, the end of the video, but if you're interested in that, there's a section at the end here. But yeah, go over to Age channel, check out his, uh, his workshop, and uh, we've got fencing coming up. I'm going to do the guards for the sawmill. Um, I've got a cabinet that I'm working on in there and I've ordered the glass and everything for the greenhouse so there's loads coming and uh, yeah, lot, always got lots of content I'm just so busy at the moment it's hard to keep up with everything <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching so yeah, in my last video I made a bottle jack for the tensioning system a lot of criticism about it I say I should use a screw thread because the uh, bottle jack's going to lose tension over time and you can't jack the bottle jack accurately both things I completely contest, absolutely not the case. A bottle jack holds its pressure for very long periods of time, they're very reliable. I mean, they've been used for so many years now. All around the world, the design is basically perfect and they're very, very good. And it will hold its pressure and uh, you can do very fine adjustments with them. And I'm gonna prove that now, I shall show you. So I'm gonna use a micrometer. Um, this digital one, hopefully the readout's not going to turn off, but it probably will. But I'm going to jack out the um, uh, bottle jack and put tension on the blade. And then we're going to stretch this between the two points. So that this point is touching one end, the bit that's fixed. And this point is touching the bit that's been pushed out under tension. And then as it retracts, we can watch the display 
count out and see how much it retracts over how much time. Now it should in theory retract a little bit over time. It will never hold tension completely forever, of course. But the key thing is, is how long does it take to lose tension? Because during the saw milling process, you're gonna be changing blades, sharpening, blade gets hot, put a bit more tension in it, blade cools down, release a bit. Do you know, it's that, that's gonna be a changing thing anyway. So how long does it need to actually stay at the tension you leave it at? Because it's gonna be changing anyway with heat. Um, I, I'd argue not that long, really. Uh, you'd expect it to stay for an hour, tension for an hour without moving significantly or much at all. And I believe a bottle jack will do that absolutely perfectly. So let's, uh, let's see, let's test it, let's find out. So here I'm just uh, tensioning up the blade, just really as tight as I can get it um, on the bottle jack. And then uh, just demonstrating by releasing the tension that the system works, so the testing works by, you know, you can see there we've gone from zero to three millimeters. So the testing rig does work. And then just watching it over a period of time, the digital readout kept turning off, so I had to keep on very carefully turning it back on again. Um, but as you can see, there was really no movement at all over that 15 minute period. Alright, so finally got some nice weather, so I can uh, carry on with the experiments of adjustability and if these lose tension over time. Um, so it's been about, well, a couple of weeks actually since I've done that. Done a whole separate video since in the man cave. But yeah, this is jacked up tight now, so I can go maybe a tiny bit more with this little lever, but that is, that is really tight. That blade is very, very tight. So we rest that on there. 6.34. Got between there, hopefully you can see that. I'll, uh, oh, it moved a tiny bit, but it was 6.34. Alright, so I give it the smallest motion that I can give it. Oh, didn't move it. Smallest motion I can give it. Okay. It moved. We are at 6.71. So we're able to do less than half a millimetre, or well, around half a millimetre movements each time. So, I mean, that's the sort of amount you do with a thread anyway. You can make very big movements or very small movements. So that's that. Okay, I already did a time lapse over a period of about 15 minutes, but this time I'm going to tighten this right up. That is really tight. Take a measurement between here and here. We got 8.12. Can you see that? Just bring you in so you can. 8.12, I'm going to leave that now for at least an hour, see if it moves. So it is currently 103, I'll leave it for at least an hour, we'll see what the measurement is. Right, I need to end this experiment now, because it's. Uh, I need to take tension off so I can carry on what I'm doing. It's now 146, and let's see, can you see that? I can't even see if you can see it, but it's 146 now, London time. Let's see what this measures at. It's had 45 minutes. Lock that there. Okay, try and pull that out. 8.09. So I'm going to say that that is effectively nothing over 45 minutes. So I think myth busted.